Hey, what's up guys? It's funny here. I'm going to show you today how to make a main menu in Unity 5 for your survival game. Let's get right into it. So I just before I want to get off starting this video, I just want to say sorry for not uploading like a lot. You know, it's been really busy for me right now. I've been trying to do my Twitch, which has over 700 followers now. You guys are awesome, seriously. You guys are seriously. If you don't know that I stream game development, uh, check that out down below. I'll leave a link down there somewhere. I don't know where, but whatever. Anyways, I just want to make this mention that we're probably only going to do one video a week from now on, maybe two if I can stretch it. But it's really a lot of work for me to be able to go and put these videos out for you guys and make them to the quality that I like. Sometimes I make even have to take two to three different takes or shots on one video to make sure that I understand what's going on and to make sure that I get you guys the very best quality. Anyways, welcome to the video today. We're going to be showing you how to make a main menu for your survival game. Um, I know this isn't a lot of gameplay, but this is kind of a fundamental part of your game anyway that you're going to have to do down the road. So I just have a simple island here. This is not the original island that I had originally created in the very first video due to the fact that I actually lost those files and they got corrupted. I don't know where they are. Um, I've got like three terabytes of storage and I don't know like where things go. So those are gone. Um, anyways, uh, I've got this. This is actually going to be my main menu so that I don't have to load a lot of things. It, already this is, this is not a very CPU intensive game by no means. Um, but what I'm actually going to do to start off my main menu is you actually want to set up how you want your camera to look. So I'm actually just going to pull my game camera, my game view right there. And I'm going to go right click on over here, create, and then camera. There it is right there. Now you can see that is not going to be my main menu, and I do not want that to be in my main menu, nor will I. So my goal for this is to have a seamless game where I can go from the main menu straight to playing without any sort of loading screens. So I'm taking, I'm leaving my camera inside of my, inside of my island so that I don't have to load another scene and I don't have to create a ton of new scenes to kind of encapsulate the size of my file. Anyways, so you want to kind of position the camera into a spot that you like. So let's just say, there, I'll bear it back once I get this camera positioned. Okay, so now that I've got the camera where I like it to be positioned, I'm actually going to create a menu, which is super simple. I'm going to show you guys where you can get your own fonts, where you can get your own images, and all that. And it'll be super quick and easy. Alright, so for me, I personally get my fonts from a font website called fontsquirrel.com. It is entirely free to use. All of the fonts are 100% commercially available. And it is absolutely fantastic. So if you go to your, your web browser, you go font squirrel like once again I will have a, a link to this down below you'll have this there's a purple website be great so all of these fonts are completely free to use they are commercially available you can even read all about the the website how they actually go through and they handpick these fonts and when people send them to them they have to review them and make sure that they are commercially available so let's just say I want to use any one of these fonts and I will be right okay so now once you've picked your font you just import it right into unity it's a simple drag and drop process you drag and drop the uh, OTF file and then you drag and drop it right into your unity editor and it'll be all imported ready to go I picked a font called Mathlet I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, and I apologize if I'm not. Anyways, I'll have that link down in the description, and I'll kind of get into how we're going to set this up now. To first of all start, you are going to want to create a new canvas. Please ignore all the water for simple uh, reflection cameras. We can clean those up later. It's not that big of a deal. That's just something that Unity will generate, um, especially if you're in the game view or if you've used the camera before. They're not really that important. So if they do pop up for you, just ignore them and leave them alone. So if I go to UI and then I want to create a new text, which will automatically generate a canvas as well as an event system. Event system allows you to click on buttons and interact with things while you are inside of the game. So first of all, you got to set up your canvas. So I'm going to rename this to main menu. And also make sure that you do a screen space camera or a screen space overlay, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use overlay, but you can do either. Not that big of a deal, I thought I'd throw that in there. Make sure it's selected as pixel perfect though. This is very important, it has to be pixel perfect. Or you're gonna end up with a weird looking semi blurry font. It's gonna look really strange. So now that I have this, this is your canvas right here. This huge blank transparent object is now your canvas. 
Now, it's pretty empty and whatnot. Oh, so I just want to note this other thing. You should select scale with screen size, just, just as a small note. Um, and I'll have, I'll have my text over here. And what's going on here is if this is my text, if you select it, you can drag it around your screen. And if I pull the game view up side beside it, you'll see that it'll actually scale over to here. So maybe, you, I don't know how well you can see that because it's actually a very small screen. But if I move it left to right, it moves left and right on the canvas. So I'm going to put the game view back where it was. Zoom in here. So this is my canvas. Um, as you can see, I've already kind of set up where I want my camera to be. This is very important. It's It depends on what you like and what you want to do. So now that we have this bit here, which is new text, I'm going to call this what my game is. So I'm just going to type here in the little text box, text script. I'm going to call this survival game, survival island. And you can choose your font. This is where your custom font will come in. If you click font, if you've imported it, it'll be right there. There's the, there it is, Mathlet Skinny. I'll link that down below. Font style, you can leave that alone. Font size and line spacing, you can change. But if you do want it to go outside of the box, make sure you go to overflow on both horizontal overflow and vertical overflow. So let's say I would like to change the color as well. There's a color box. Let's say I want to make it white. And I want to scale this up to, let's say, 40 maybe even 60. 60 looks good. Uh, also, a quick note, if you do res rescale, make sure to drag the, your box, which is up here in the top left, this four dotted little box thing. Make sure you drag it and just size it correctly. This makes it easier so that when you do go to center it on the zero, zero position, it's easier and it makes sure it's 100% centered. So if I go back to my game view, there it is, Survival Island. Like I said, this may not look the best, and I'm not really taking a whole lot of time right now to actually develop this and make it super gorgeous, but here we go. Now we're actually going to add a, a play button as well as a quit button. This is going to require a little bit of coding, but it's not too much. So first of all, you want to make your buttons. Uh, let me just rename my survival island to title. Make sure that I keep my hierarchy clean. And if I go to UI button right there it's called button I'm gonna rename this to play and you'll see the button is right there in the center of the screen and it's just a button that you can actually click on um, now that you have that I'm just gonna drag this over here on the left and maybe a bit down and make sure you see where it says up here the anchors make sure you anchor it to the right section of the screen so if I were to put it in the bottom left I would anchor it right here to the bottom left Okay, now that I've got that set, there's my button. And you can go, if you expand the button, which is play right in here in the hierarchy, if you expand it, you'll have text. And you can change this just like the other text. So I'm actually going to change this to my mathlet. And I'm going to play. I'm going to type in play. And then make sure this is overflow so that I can get the right size. And I'll have to experiment with the fonts for a few minutes. Um, that looks semi decent. I'm not I'm not worrying too much about this. Like I said, this isn't for commercial use or anything. So I'm just kind of showing you guys the basics and you can improve on it how you want. So now there's one button. Let's say, oh I just wanna I don't want to go through the whole trouble of creating the button and then centering it how I want it. So if you hit hit Command D on a Mac or Windows or Control, my bad, Control D on a Windows, you can duplicate an object. So there it is, play one. I'm gonna rename it to quit. And it'll be on the same line. If you hold shift, it'll stay on the same line. So if I just wanna move it over here, it still says play, but that's easy to fix. You just come into the text and you type quit. There it is right there. So now here's your menu. It Nothing works, but if you click play, you'll have survival island. You have um, your, some waves move in, there's your island. You can click play, you can click quit, nothing happens. We're gonna we're going to address this here in about one second. Okay, so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna open up a new script. This is my script folder. So if I right click and I go create JavaScript. Yes, we are working with JavaScript and not C sharp in this tutorial. Um, we're going to call it main menu. And then open it up with your favorite editor. 
All right, so now that you're in your editor, I personally use Mono Develop with a different theme on mine. I'll show you how to change a the theme. If you want to see that, not 100% sure, not a big deal. So you want to go and define two new functions for your play and quit buttons. One will be function play game. You can call it whatever you want. I'm calling mine play game. And then make sure you open up a set of brackies, brackets, brackies. Definitely check out brackies. They have great YouTube tutorials. Seriously, check them out. They're cool guys. Um, anyway, so function play game. You can do one of two things. You can either switch the camera, which is what I'm going to do in my game, or you can load up a new level. Now, this will not cover a loading screen. Um, you will have to go visit somebody else's tutorial for that. If you want to see me do a loading screen, let me know in comments or Twitch or something like that. Just let me know. So function play game. For this simple tutorial, I'm just going to load into a new level. So function play game. Here's my. This is going to be my button. If I type in application, capital A, application dot uh, load level, uh, open parenthesis, uh, and then quotes. And then this will be your level name. So I'm going to call this, you could do basically insert level name here. So right in here, you'll have your level name, which you can, whatever your, your next level is called, would be what you would insert into these two colored little quotations here. So I'm just going to call mine level two, which is what I'm going to name my scene here. So now, make sure you test this. Every line of code you write with this is just kind of a general rule of thumb. Make sure you test it as you go. Because what will happen if you write 100 lines of code and you haven't tested it one time, one line of that will be broken. It'll, it'll be messing up something or not doing it the way that you'd like to be done. And now you have no idea which bit is going to happen and you're going to have to go through those 100 lines. So it just makes it easier. So application.load level level 2. So let's do this so if I go back let me make my new level called level 2 if I go create uh, scene let's say I just want to call this level 2 there's my level 2 scene make sure to save your old scene this is my level 2 scene here it's just an empty scene I'm not going to go into details of creating a second level or nothing like that today so go back to my scenes folder load up my island here's my survival island main menu looking good so far. So now let's say I want to apply this to my play button. Click on your play button wherever it's selected. You can either do it in the hierarchy or in the scene view. Doesn't matter. Here it is, this button script here. Don't worry about the highlighted color, the press color, disabled color. You feel free to mess with that on your own time. It's your game. Go ahead, explore Unity. Do whatever you want with it. You can really make some cool things with these buttons. You can make them animated. You can make them fade when you click them. You can do all sorts of stuff. But for this tutorial, I'm just showing you how to set up a simple main menu. So if you click on your play button, it says on click. And you say, like, what does that mean? And the list is empty. If I click on plus, plus here, you have this here. Runtime only, none, and then some other no function stuff. First of all, before you even touch that, I just wanted to show you how to do the on click. Make sure, this is very important, I've had this happen to me before, that you apply, you apply your your script that's doing everything to just some object in your game. I'm just going to create a new one that's called GM, which is stands for Game Manager, which holds all of my scripts. So I just apply this main menu script to my my game manager, and it won't do anything. But you'll see here in a second what what I can do with it. So if we go back to here, my button script section, you'll see here on click it says none game object. I click on that, that pulls up all the objects in my scene, which is a lot of objects, too many in my opinion. I search for Game Manager. There it is. You see this GM. You'll get a, it, the list will refine itself. Click on that. This will open up this box here, which says no function. If I click on it, you can see, look, there's my main menu script. And there's a whole bunch of stuff, bool enabled, string name. Don't worry about that. But you see, there's play game. And you say, wow, that, that's a function I wrote. If I click play game, that looks awesome. Um, and now, once you click play, what will happen is we're going to encounter an error really quick, which is fine. If I click play, we'll get an error. It says, scene level 2 could not be loaded because it has not been added to the build settings or the asset bundle has not been loaded. To add a scene to the build settings, use menu, file, build settings. 
easy fix, you probably will encounter this. So if I go to File, Build Settings, just make sure that you go to your scenes and you drag them into your build settings. This is a very simple, all you have to do is just, it's just drag and drop. It's very easy to sort and to build correctly. So now that we have that going on, once we click play, it should load into our level two. So, oh, here we go. Survival Island. This looks like a fun game. Let's play it. If I click play, it loads into our level two. Like I said, your level two could be a loading scene that then loads into another level that makes it semi-seamless. Or your level two could just be your second level of your platform that you're developing or your survival game or another island. I mean, you can do so many things with this. Like I said, this is just a simple function. By no means is this an in-depth program tutorial. But anyways, we're actually going to cover the quit game button to make sure that's working. So open back up your script, which I have open in mono develop here. We're going to make a new function entitled function quit game. And then two brackets, parentheses, whatever they're called. And then some other pair of brackets here, whatever they're called. I'm not 100% sure what everything's called, but just bear with me. So here's function quit game. You want to do application dot quit and then both two brackets and a semicolon at the end. Now to make sure you won't be able to actually test this if this is working in the editor. So what we have to do is add a debug dot log. Make sure that everything uh, the debug, the D and debug and the L and log is capitalized because this plays a very, very important role or else Unity will not see it. So debug dot log. And if we do an open bracket and we type in what we want to say, we could say Hello world. Like I said, you can type in anything between those two those two uh, parentheses or quotation marks and it'll still work. And make sure you add a semicolon at the end. I could type in I like pizza and it would still work. Or even Hello, my name my name is Bob or something like that. But for my purposes, I'm just going to type in hello world to make sure that's working. Make sure that you save this. And there you go. There's your function quit game and there's your function play game. So if we go back into Unity here, click on the quit buttons the same same way. You click on on click, none, if it would open. And then GM, no function. And you go to, you see main menu, there it is. There's, there's a quick game right there. Quick game. Play. And here we are in your game. Make sure you have your console open as well once you click quit because you will not be able to actually quit the game from, from Unity. You'll have to render that out and then test it if you really want to double check to make sure that it works. But if I click quit, you see, hello world. There it is. You can click it a million times and it'll say hello world every time you click it. That means that it is checking to see that you do, when you click it, it will quit your game for you. Let's say, oh, I want to play my game. I click play. You load into your nice level two. It's working good. I just wanted to show you guys how to do this. This is a very simple tutorial. This isn't like a super in-depth one as I think a lot of people are waiting for. Trust me, tree chopping is coming very soon. Like that's something that I've really been holding on to for a little while because I know a lot of you guys really do want tree chopping. You're like, oh, I want, you know, animal trapping. I want tree chopping. I want all this stuff. And it's like, that stuff does take time to develop. So I'm trying to figure out what's the best way of giving it to you guys and then explaining it line by line so that you guys actually learn something out of the experience. Anyways, if this video has helped you today, leave a comment, like, whatever the heck you do on YouTube. I'm from the Twitch space over there, whatever. We, uh, I'm actually on the game development panel this year at TwitchCon 2016. Definitely check that out. I'll have a link to that in the, in the description below. And uh, if this video has helped you today, uh, enjoy, just like, or whatever the heck you do. And uh, peace, peace, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.